Alright guys, simple little tutorial today, but just creating something cool. We're going to create a portal like that that you would see in anything that's got a portal in it. Um, as you might be able to hear, my sound sounds a lot better, so I've just got myself a snazzy new microphone so these tutorials can start to sound a bit better. Right, so here we go, we've got a curve, NURBS curve, and I'm just going to go into the animation menu. I'm going to go Deform Nonlinear Wave. There's our wave handle. Let's just go up into the wave. I'm going to shoot that max radius up really high. And I'm going to drag this all the way over to here. I'm going to click in the amplitude. Make that somewhat bigger. I'm going to hit Shift W here. And then move all the way up to frame 400. Drag this all the way over here. Shift W again. And because I'm going to have a linear curve now. I'm going to go into a, a Bezier curve. I'm going to go Animation Editors, Graph Edit. And I'm going to grab that curve. And I'm going to make that linear. There we go. Go. So now when that curve moves, we've just got the same amount of time. There's a little bug in my at the moment that makes this uh, uh, deformer disappear, but maybe it's my graphics card, I don't know. So there we go, it's moving and doing its thing. Um, I might up the amplitude a little bit, just so we get a bit more of a bend going on. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Right, so with that bend deformer there, I'm just going to create a display layer for it, I'm going to switch it off because I don't want to see it anymore, but that is still animating. So we're going to select a curve, we're going to go into effects, end particles, and I'm going to hit emit from object. That's going to give us um, our nuclear system, I'm just going to dock this in here, so we can see that our emitter is in there, so if we go to the attribute editor of the emitter, we can change the emitter type to curve, um, and then if we rewind and play, it's emitting from the curve. So the next step I want to do is um, I'm going to go into the actual particle itself. I'm going to go into the dynamic properties and I'm going to pull the conserve down somewhat because that's going to allow the particles to not be affected by forces so much. And I'm also going to switch on ignore solver gravity. So those particles are just going to build and build and build and build and build. Okay. Right, the next step I want to do is I want those particles to go back a little bit, but I'm going to do that by using a field. So we go select the particle, go into fields, and I'm going to create a volume axis. Um, that's a square. I think really what we want is something that looks a little bit more cylindrical. So let's choose a cylinder. I'm going to uh, rotate this round so that it's going to be about the right sort of shape. And I'll drag it back here, round about here, something like that. That's going to do us. Uh, so obviously we've got a magnitude there, but what I want it to do, I want it to co go along the axes. So if you drag this back into the minus, depending on what way around you've set your scene up, you'll see that there's a little sort of perforated arrow that points backwards to show us that that is the way that the particles are going to go, and they are. Uh, we can drag it back more to get more of an effect. So we're just going to switch this down a bit. Um, turbulence, all this kind of stuff. We can make it go around the axes as well. So let's just give it a little bit of that. That's cool. And I'm going to rewind and I'm going to scale this up like that so they go back further but I'm going to get the particles to be finishing sooner so we're going to stick a lifespan on them so we're going to go into constant in the particle attribute editor, and I'm going to switch this to about 3 currently and this is going to help your performance speed anyway so let's press play and they're going to start disappearing after a certain amount of time there you go they're all starting to switch off now um, I might actually scale this up a little bit more just so we've got a bit more room to play with. But I'm going to go back into the attributes of this now. Um, and we've got away from axes set to 1. So it's spreading out this way and this way and hitting the sides of this. So I kind of want it to go in a little bit. But just by a really small amount. So I'm just going to put in a small number. Let's try minus 45 for now. And there we go. They're all starting to go down. If I just drag that back a bit more. Let's just see if we can get a bit more of an effect going on. There we go, that's pretty cool. So now um, this portal is going back too far for my liking, so we'll go back to the lifespan and we'll just stick in two. Just rewind and play to see how far that's going to go back. Yeah, it's kind of like breaking off about there. 
that's all right. So the next step for me is I'm going to uh, start up in the resolution of this. So we're going to go into the emitter. I'm going to start um, with, uh, let's just go up to a thousand. And then we're going to rewind and play that. So a thousand is not going to be nearly enough, but it's going to give me an idea of the sort of shape that's starting to go on here. So I want to add some turbulence in there. Um, so with particle selective, it's going to go to fields, turbulence. So we've added some turbulence. Um, I'm going to pull down the attenuation so that the effect starts straight away rather than after like a second. So and we'll just play the magnitude bit. Now the magnitude and the kind of shape and pattern that you get from this is going to be based on uh, how fast your particle is moving. So we can slow this particle down by using the conserve, which means the turbulence is going to get a little bit more time to um, affect it. And as you can see, we're starting to get a nice kind of wobble, some nice shapes going on. I might go back to the turbulence and bring that magnitude up. We can play with the frequency, and that's really going to affect the kind of pattern that's going on in the shape here. Um, the more I pull that number downwards towards zero, the more the frequency is going to kind of be scaled up, as in like bigger shapes rather than smaller shapes, if that makes sense. But we'll just leave it for now because this don't look too bad. All right, cool. So I think I'm going to bring that conserve down a bit more. And all of this is really kind of personal. You guys might want to do this in a really different way and get a different look. So once again, as with all my children, choose always is just the idea, just showing you different ways or you know a way that you might not have seen before to create something. So with the particles there, I'm just going to go and change the shape of my particles because I don't like my particles to be small. Um, I'm going to go back into the emitter and I'm going to add another zero. Rewind and play. So now we've got this kind of cool looking streaky effect, but I think we can get, break that up a little bit with a little bit of spread as it comes out. And I might add a small amount of turbulence just to the end of this where it's being emitted. So the particle selected, I'm just going to go into field solvers, turbulence. Um, and with this one, we're going to give it a, uh, a volume shape. And this one, I'm going to use a, oh, what should I use? I think I'm going to use a cylinder again. I'm going to hit E, J, just to snap it around there. And I'm going to hit R to scale it up. And then I think I'm going to bring it back to about here. That should give us enough to start to break up the uniformity that we're getting in this pattern. Uh, attenuation down. And let's just rewind and play, see if we've got enough magnitude going on there. Not quite, and I think I'm going to bring this back a bit more, bring that magnitude up a bit. So it's breaking up a bit, starting to get some interesting shapes there. But I still think we can get rid of that uniform sort of pattern that's going on. So let's have the end particle up. Um, obviously with the conserve as it is, that's going to be something that's affecting the shape that this is coming out at. So let's try up in the speed a little bit, and we want a speed random. It's going to help us out quite a lot here. So there we go. Really, really starting to break up now. A whole lot less uh, uniform. Let's hit five, rewind, and play. Um, spread. I'm just going to lower a bit. Okay, so now we're going to start doing something that's, again, it's going to be personal taste, but this is something I really like the look of. So I'm going to grab a cube, I'm going to scale it right down, really small, really small like that, and I'm going to create a mesh network of that cube. So let's hit to create a mesh network. Now there is currently a bug in Maya 2019 that doesn't show the mesh waiter node um, in the outline unless you search for mesh up here and then when it shows up hit the cross button and then mesh appears there. Um, apparently they're gonna fix that. Uh, I hope they do it soon, it's quite annoying. Right, so we've got a mesh network um, we've got a distribute going on. I'm just going to pull down the uh, X amount. 
But what I'm going to do with the weights are selected, I'm going to select the particle as well, and I'm going to go into the mesh utilities, and I'm going to use um, end particles to distribute the mesh points. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, we need to do it the other way around. Sorry, so select the particle, select the mesh. I knew it'd be the way that I didn't do it. So let's click on use end particles. So now we've got mesh cubes attached to our particles. So if we wind and play, they actually follow the animation, which is pretty cool. So you can see that we can create some fun effects here using all sorts of different shapes. Um, the next thing I want to do though, because really these mesh shapes aren't here um, for me to do this. In fact, I'm going to be hiding them. Um, so we're going to grab the repro mesh and I'm just going to hide it. And then I'm going to go into the mesh network attributes get rid of this um, and I'm going to create a trails node so for one play now you're not going to see a whole lot well apart from a few trails that start there now you could up the amount of trails that are shown here um, and it does look pretty cool uh, so it could be a, a way that you want to start sort of doing your uh, animation using the trails node so if we play you can see that those trails are following some of the particles. So obviously we're emitting, uh, I believe it's 10,000 particles a second. Uh, we've only got 1,000 trails, so it's going to take quite a lot for them to keep up. So if I go up to 5,000, we'll still see some more, which is pretty cool. And it is a cool look, but it's not the look that I'm going to show you right now. Um, it's also pretty intensive. Um, so yeah. Let's just bring that back down to about 100 and I'm going to go with uh, connect to nearest and I'm going to bring the amount of trails up to about 3000 and as you can see these little trails are starting to show up here which is going to give us some kind of like digital type effect but I'm going to bring this up to about 10,000 um, and let's turn the count up which is the amount that, uh, uh, that Ugh, I can't even get my words out. It's the amount in which these guys are going to uh, connect and create, you know, some kind of pattern for us. So we bring that count right up. But obviously, this count is also still dependent on the amount of trails we've got going on here. So I might bring that up to twenty thousand. Uh, let's just go. Let's just go mad. Let's go sixty thousand trails. So now we've got something really freaky looking, um, kind of cobwebby, interesting look. And all of these mesh uh, networks, these trails, they're connecting to the particles and creating reconnections as it all moves around, which I think is a pretty neat look. So we can see that, that those mesh trails, the um, amount of trails that we've created have almost run out. So we could add more of a count if we took it up to 12. And then I might add this to 90,000. So it gives us some more. And it just depends on the look that you want to go for and in fact how much your um, machine can keep up with this so I've got a pretty powerful machine now I'm going to add in 120,000 and now we've you know completely filled up this this uh, this particle sim and that to me is a pretty saucy look uh, I quite like it. it's really different um, and it'll render okay so we can I'm just gonna render with V-Ray today just because you know, make a change um, so I'm gonna go create light so I'm gonna go create a rectangle light and I'm gonna move that around actually I'm gonna hit T so that we can use a, a transform there so that we can kind of move this around I'm just gonna go into my options box go out to the Arnold renderer hit V-Ray Gonna make sure GI is on because that's what you have to do with V-Ray. Right, it's so around here, guys, that the audio went kind of strange once I started IPR rendering. So I'm just gonna voice over this, try and not look at my lips moving um, on the video insert, and I can just talk you through what's going on now. So I'm just gonna switch off the visibility of the light and we're just gonna sort of move the right light around and just see some other different looks that we can get so i tend to like lighting from the side um, or the back just to create like a key and a fill light um, but with this kind of thing i just like to light with a single rectangle light because i think you get some really cool looking effects um, 
this is looking quite nice There's some really nice detail over here going on um, and it just it just would work for like artwork and also um, animation as well so yeah you could you could pull off some really nice stills here so I'm going to switch on some depth of field and pull the aperture right down um, and then we're going to start selecting different areas where we can focus on so we're just right clicking and clicking on focus point so now we've got the foreground out of focus and the background in focus and then we're just going to reverse it so we've got the foreground in focus and the background out of focus and you get some really cool looks so obviously the particles are still sitting inside here um, we just can't see them at the moment because the mash is sitting over the top um, so what we can do is go back to that display layer and switch on the mash cubes if we want just to see what they look like in there um, because obviously they're what helped us generate the mash trails earlier so we can assign um, a material to that repro mesh uh, if we want we can assign it to the original cube but I've just decided to go with a repro mesh this time um, and if we look for that MTL shader we'll be able to stick on some self illumination um, but we're just going to have to stop the IPR render for a moment and then uh, restart it with that self illumination GI switched on so that we can actually see it lighting the object so those little cubes are light in the object now um, obviously we can change the colour um, to be honest I'd like to see those cubes a bit smaller because they're kind of overpowering everything at the moment so we're just going to scale that down so they get smaller and smaller until they're just kind of like tiny points of light and again this might be a look that you would, you don't go for but you know as with all of the videos I just try and show you ways of doing things that could look pretty cool um, you can obviously go about it it's a very personal thing um, so I think now we're going to add a shader to the trails themselves um, obviously we can make this as unique as we want um, we can add some reflection in there just so that we get some highlight glints from it um, this that would probably work better if we had like a HDRI on a dome light or something like that in there to sort of make it all ping um, but to be honest I prefer it without the reflections so we'll play around with this for a little bit see if there's anything that looks interesting I mean it looks kind of metallic and still like so if that's a look you were going for then that would work some kind of transformers style portal you know um, but yeah let's just get rid of that reflection and uh, We'll just pull back up to that kind of grey again. So there's um, a whole lot of detail going on over here, which is kind of nice. We'll just go in and focus on this area. Actually looks a bit Christmassy, to be honest. But yeah, you get some really interesting looks going on. Um, Obviously those particles, as I said, are in there somewhere. Um, they're sort of hidden behind that the, uh, the mash at the moment. So we're going to add a bunch more particles. Um, and because we haven't turned the amount of mash trails up, we're you know, potentially going to be able to see some particles closer to the end of the simulation. But um, I don't believe I showed that here. I think it just showed the uh, fact that we could get rid of those cubes again and show some of the particles. In fact, it's kind of weird watching myself talking over this video because that's what I'm uh, having to do to do the voiceover. But uh, I feel like I'm sort of chatting to myself. Anyway, I digress. Um, let's turn those cubes off and let's just uh, get rid of the mash count or sort of bring that back down to um, a lower count so we can see the particles themselves obviously we're getting some nice shapes going on in here we could have still broken these particles up some more um, I could have probably emitted in some sort of sub steps just mucked about with the nucleus a bit 
just to stop that kind of pattern going on but to be honest that pattern is kind of like a happy accident i think it looks pretty cool and it's one of the reasons that we animated that curve in the first place so just rendering these particles at the moment you see that we're only going to be able to see them from one side of the camera and that's because that's where the light is um that's because we're dealing with points in space rather than like any kind of uh geometrical 3d shape so if you want to be able to see it from all angles like that your particle is going to need to go in and change the shading type from points to uh, spheres so if we just turn these to spheres and then they're going to be massive of course so um, we're going to need to go up and turn down the actual size of the particle itself we we'll just scale that back down obviously we're rendering at the same time as trying to change the particle size which in hindsight it's not the best idea so we're just going to put in a number like 20 here which is um you know enables you to see it from all of the angles and uh, this is obviously using v-ray i'm not 100 percent sure on how arnold deals with this side of things but you're just gonna have to test it out so we've got some small particles going on there and again kind of looks nice kind of quite mono and stark kind of music video-ish and yeah I mean you could use this for a um, you know any kind of music overlay just have this kind of con consistently animating and different effects changing on it so we could bring like the trails down so that we can see more of those particles, um, and we're gonna have to like re-simulate this to see what see what happens. But those trails are starting to turn up on the tef left, uh, top left-hand corner. Um, but it's you know it's based on the amount of particles that are being emitted at the moment. So we could have done with turning the particle count down just to see some of those trails again. But, um, We'll stick a bigger number in here, see if we can start to see them turning up, and they're turning up on that sort of back end now. Um, but yeah, just playing around again, just to get some different kind of looks going on. And now we've sort of fully brought back again. But, you know, it's overkill me showing you multiple different ways of doing this because you really need to go off and do it yourself, to be honest. Um, you know, it's uh, again, as I said, it's sort of personal taste. So um, yeah, that's kind of it, really, guys. Um, just an interesting, different way of doing things. Again, like with all my tutorials, this is just an idea, um, and you can either use it and build on it yourself, or just completely copy it. As you know, I've been giving away free files lately, so um, I might just upload this one as well. Um, all I ask is that you like the video and subscribe, share it if you can. I would like to try and get that subscribe account up and uh, keep doing these videos. But yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, sorry about the sound. Speak soon.